All right, we're going to conclude systems of linear equations with an idea I think I should have just put in the last video. We saw that sometimes we get an unusual uh, idea that we saw we could sometimes have all the x's and y's drop out and what was left was telling something that wasn't true. So you'd have 5 equals 4. That meant there's no solution, that the equations don't intersect each other. Well, I think I should have put this in there as well. We have another alternative that can happen. If we were to look at this equation by the addition method, do you see we could run a negative 3 through here to create those opposites with the x's? But if I do that, so jump down to here where they've run a negative 3 through here, if I then add them, I get 0 equals 0. Well, that is telling the truth. So what's happening here? Well, what that means is we literally have the same line on top of each other. And if the question is where do these lines intersect, well, they intersect everywhere. They're touching everywhere at the same time, and so there is an infinite number of solutions. Okay, so if we try this again, we can see the same thing. I'm going to run a 3 through here, and I'm going to create 3y minus 6x equals 15. Well, if I add those up, everything is going to drop out, and I get 0 equals 0, and that's infinite solutions. Okay, now the most common application here that we'll see all the time with lines is the break-even point of a function. So cost can often be represented as linear, where this is my startup cost is $35,000, the slope is 0.85, like every time I make another uh, one of these items, that's how much it costs me, 85 cents. And our revenue is represented here by 1.55x, so every time I sell one, I make $1.55. So what I might be interested in is where do these two lines hit each other? That would be called the break-even point. So let's try it. I've got my first equation. Here's cost. Here's revenue. Let's see where they hit each other. You see we're naturally set up right here. I've got y equals 1.55x. I've got substitution already set up. So I'm going to just drop that y in. Solve. I get 50,000 put x into the either equation to solve for y, and here is my solution. So when, and in terms of the context here, if I sell 50,000 of these, then I break even at $77,500. Now if I graph them, you would see these are two lines, and the point where they intersect here, right there, is my break even point. It's where they intersect. Okay, we're going to end here with a word problem. We're going to call, make a little dictionary. C is going to be the number of children, children's tickets sold. And A is going to be the number of adult tickets. I usually like X and Y here to stay consistent. but they're, And you could, you could use X and Y, but um, they're going to call it C and A here. So we've got two equations. We're going to say... Here's the one I want to start with. It's $25 for every kid plus $50 for every adult ticket sold. So can you see if they've sold $70,000? This is my equation. I've made a profit of $25 per kid plus $50 per adult. tells me this is how much they made at the end of the day, $70,000. Now, we can set up another equation. They sold 2,000 tickets. Well, that's easy. Kids plus adults equals 2,000. Now, we could do substitution or elimination. We could even graph it if we wanted. But this top equation is going to set up nicely for substitution. So we're going to say the adult tickets is 2,000 minus C. So I'm going to drop that in to the other equation for A. Now I crunch this down, distribute my 50, solve for C, and I'll get 1,200. So they must have sold 1,200 kids' tickets. Well, if I use the other equation to solve for A, if they sold 1,200 kid tickets, they must have sold 800 adult tickets. So my point of intersection here has just an application in the terms of the real world. All right, I hope those made sense. You've got the graphic, graphic uh, graphing approach, which is not the best, uh, and you've got the substitution and elimination. Just watch out for those odd things that can occur. If you have something left that tells a, li a lie, 4 equals 5, then there's no solution. The lines are parallel, they never touch. If you get something left that tells the truth, it doesn't have to be 0 equals 0, but it often is, then that means that the two lines are on top of each other and you have infinite solutions.